Health and safety is one of those things that people love to hate. There are all those stories in the media about health and safety going mad. But when it comes to commercial cleaning, health and safety has to be taken seriously. Many of the products that we use can be harmful if used incorrectly. Also, the equipment we use has to be used and maintained correctly to avoid personal injury. Then the act of cleaning itself can be dangerous, particularly regarding posture, lifting and the use of ladders. The best way we can create a positive attitude towards health and safety is to make sure that everyone is involved in creating best practice procedures and that once they are created, they are adhered to. But this is not just about best practice. Health and safety is also enshrined in the law. So if we do not pay attention to safety in the workplace or cause injury or infection to someone, then whoever is responsible is liable to prosecution. To help with compliance, Jangro provide a wide range of safety data sheets as required by the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations and the Chemicals Hazard Information and Packaging for Supply Regulations. Also exclusive to Jangro, we provide safe working procedures and product usage guides, which explain the safe and appropriate use of each chemical in our range of cleaning products. They are specially designed to be easily understood and use a simple pictorial format to help overcome any learning and language barriers. There are also easy to understand Jangro wall charts covering health and safety issues. We also provide employee handbooks to help in understanding health and safety best practice. In this module, we'll introduce you to the key aspects of health and safety regarding the cleaning industry. Further detailed information can be found in the unique Jangro guides, data sheets and wall charts. It's the employer's responsibility to conduct risk assessments and continuously monitor safe working practices and to ensure best practice is applied at all times. It's important that we report any issues, injuries or accidents in the workplace to a supervisor. Well done, well spotted. I'll make a note on here and we won't use this again. No site will be perfect, but we're all obliged to contribute towards a safe working environment. Jangro have produced a set of comprehensive risk assessments to assist in compliance. These cover every chemical product we produce, plus many cleaning procedures and a variety of cleaning equipment. Some cleaning activities represent more risk than others, such as working at height. It's not a good idea to stand on chairs or other objects instead of using a stepladder, but we must all be aware of the correct use of ladders. Consult your risk assessment to make sure you get both the preparation and use of ladders correct. But it's not just obvious hazards, such as the use of ladders. For instance, we need to adopt the correct working posture when using cleaning machinery. So always work in an upright position and with a straight back. Move with the machine in the direction you're cleaning to avoid bending your body from side to side. Poor posture can lead to injury and time off work and it's estimated that 12 million days are lost through musculoskeletal disorders such as strains, sprains, back, neck and shoulder problems. When moving machinery, always use the wheels and handles provided and only lift machinery when it's absolutely necessary to do so. Never lift more than the recommended weight limits laid down in manual handling regulations. It's important that we take care of equipment. It's a major investment for you and the cleaning business. Before using any equipment, you must make sure it is fit for purpose and free of damage to the casing and wheels. You know where the tanks are at the front? Just undo that tank there for me. Never operate equipment unless you have the correct training and are confident to do so, as using equipment incorrectly can not only result in damage to your workplace, but could cause injury to yourself or others. If it's your responsibility, you should maintain a service record for equipment and ensure the machine is serviced as per the manufacturer's guidance. Then ensure that all cables are free from wear, cuts and tears and that no bare wires are showing. 
check the pins of the plug to make sure they are not bent or loose. Always empty and clean equipment after use. Check for current PAT stickers. That stands for Portable Appliance Test on all electrical equipment. If any equipment is faulty, we should stick a Do Not Use label on the machine. Always unplug and store the cable on electrical equipment after use, so it does not remain live and doesn't create a trip hazard to others around you. Then ensure all equipment gets returned to the security of the cleaning cupboard, out of harm's way. Where possible, Jangro have a common sense approach to product labels. It usually does what it says on the label. It's also a legal requirement to have safety information and we must obey these instructions. This safety information includes colour coding. This is there to help prevent harmful bacteria from being transmitted around a building and is designed to prevent a cleaning cloth which is used to clean a toilet being used in a food preparation area. So it's important that you are aware of your colour coding scheme and adhere to it. Since there is no law regarding colour coding, we must be aware that this scheme may vary, but Jangro works to the most common code adopted by the cleaning industry. There are also a number of hazard warning symbols on labels, warning if a product is an irritant, corrosive, flammable or harmful to the environment. Many products also include a pH scale on the label, which is numbered from 0 to 14. The pH scale of 7 is neutral, and any product with a number below 7 is acidic. The majority of washroom cleaning products are acidic and have a low pH number because they have to be effective against bacteria and lime scale. Any product with a number higher than 7 is alkaline. These include floor polish strippers and caustic soda. Care must be taken when using these products. The correct usage and dilution procedures adhered to and the appropriate protective clothing worn. So always read the label and check the pH scale before use. When diluting products, always add the product to the water and not the other way round. This avoids the danger of the product being splashed out of the bucket owing to high pressure water coming out of the tap. Make sure any generic containers, such as this trigger bottle, are labelled correctly. Use dilution pumps to control dosage and prevent spills. There is a Jangro dilution chart for guidance. Also, never mix chemicals, as a reaction may occur and release a toxic gas. Mixing acid and alkaline products may neutralise the cleaning effect. It's important to take care of products. This means always replacing caps on bottles securely and always returning them to the appropriate store cupboard immediately after use. We must never leave chemicals unattended as this represents a danger, especially in schools, care homes, hotels and public facilities. Beyond risk assessments and product labelling, here are some general rules which will help us all adhere to health and safety best practice. It's a legal obligation for the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, to be provided, and we must always use it, however frequently we carry out a task. Its use is mandatory for a reason, our safety. Risk assessment of all cleaning tasks will include PPE instructions, so please read them. PPE will protect our eyes, hands, body, and feet. Doesn't that look smart? Always inspect equipment before use and pay particular attention to electrical equipment. Check the casing is not damaged or cracked and associated cables, plugs and switches are not damaged in any way. Also check that a PAT test label is present and that the retest date has not expired. Hazard warning signs are used throughout the workplace and we must understand and obey them. They are there to keep us safe. They basically fall into five categories. Signs which prohibit behaviours, mandatory signs which indicate a specific course of action, fire equipment signs, emergency signs and hazard signs. Then there are safety signs 
which we must all use whenever required. Use the appropriate sign for each cleaning task and remember not to remove them until the job is completely finished. For example, if you're wet mopping a floor, do not remove the signs until the floor is completely dry. We must know the location of all first aid kits and bear in mind that as well as standard kits such as this, there may be others, including burns kits, eye wash stations, sharps disposal and biohazard kits. And one final piece of advice regarding health and safety. If in doubt, stop and ask. Never ever take risks.